Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency assets, and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's all about Coinbase and the XRP Spark airdrop and what's going on behind it. We're gonna take a look at why XRP holders are going to receive more Spark airdrop, all the different exchanges and wallets that are supporting this, as well as messages from Celsius and from the CEO of Voyager himself. On top of that, I want to take a look at what's going on with Coinbase and why I believe they are actually crumbling in the background, everything from outages to discrimination, and finally the big one, market competition. And it's why I believe Coinbase is falling way behind and they are just playing catch up. Also, Christmas is coming up and you got people around you who like coffee and are trying to be smart. Why don't you try Smart Coffee? It is the world's first nootropic instant coffee. Links in the description and I'll talk about all this at the end of today's video. And we'll go over all that first, take a look what's going on in the market very quickly. It is November 29th, it is high noon, and what do we have today? Well, it is Sunday, so I always expect big drops, but uh, no, I guess the big drop already happened uh, earlier in the week. So we got Bitcoin up by 2% and it broke through the $18,000 resistance range. So we are right now sitting just above 18. Now, this could change by the time I put this video out, but that is positive news because there was a lot of different proponents and pundits out there talking about how Bitcoin would drop to potentially 14, 12, and I've already even $10,000. So for all the people who had strong hands, they go, you know what, I don't care, I'm, I'm picking it up. Congratulations to you, you are the winner today. So 18K for Bitcoin, not too bad. Ethereum. 550 at 1.8. Hey, I like those numbers. XRP is down a little bit. That's kind of odd. Seven days for 30%. XRP, and this is what we're all talking about today, about uh, XRP and the smart airdrop. So you would think that there would be more people buying into XRP to get the airdrop, but apparently that's not the case. But 30% for the day, uh, for the seven day, but down 4.5%. But it is Sunday, so what are you going to do? Tether is uh, keeps printing at their treasury. I'd like to see an audit on that, but whatever. Uh, it looks like it's at uh, 19 billion. Bitcoin Cash firmly in the uh, fifth spot. Well, not firmly. I can't say that because market cap is uh, 5.18 billion. Chainlink is right at its heels at 5.178 billion. So that'll be flipping around uh, throughout the whole week. Then we've got Litecoin Cardano up 22% for the uh, seven day, down a little bit, but uh, I am. I'm looking at Cardano. I'm really going to be uh, delving into that uh, that project a lot more coming up, and uh, I'll tell you all about it. So then going down, Polkadot, 3.7 up, 1.5. Anything fantastic? No, not really. Let's take a look at what this looks like, uh, not in USD, but how about in Bitcoin? So, of course, we're looking at Bitcoin. It's all zeros across the board for Bitcoin. Uh, but how does that in relation uh, as far as Ethereum? Well, Ethereum down a half to the top crypto. 3.9 for seven day XRP, roughly about the same thing. I mean, it really isn't. I like to take a look at this because I like a, a different view as opposed to the dollar because it kind of just gives me like a better uh, judgment of what is happening with the overall crypto market. Down 2.8 for Chainlink, 12%. Litecoin up uh, 26, so roughly the same. Not too much uh, really action going on here. 7.8 for NEM, 1.8. All right, so what you're looking at here is in relation to how these altcoins are doing as compared to Bitcoin, not in dollars, but uh, just as it compares to the king, the king uh, crypto. And uh, I know people say, ah, it's old, but I mean, this is what it is. So this is how you're doing if you would have, uh, you know, gone against, not put your money into Bitcoin. I mean, like Litecoin, you'd be up. What else? Polkadot, a little bit. And um, really, that's it. Waves, uh, Zillica, Ampleforth. Nexo 12.8. So you can see that um, when people talk about Bitcoin as being the main one, well, there's a reason. So no interesting in the comment section, but uh, let's go to today's top stories. This is big for a lot of reasons. And when we talk about this, it's all about Coinbase just kind of just going, you know what? We're going to do what Coinbase wants to do, not what you guys want to do, what we want to do. And I think that is one of the big downfalls of companies is that they don't really listen to their customers. The companies that do that really you know, pay attention to like what their customers want. Take a look at Amazon. Anything that the customer wants, essentially they get. I mean, that's just how it is. But when you take a look at businesses that don't listen and pay attention, there's the ones that just, just falter and fall. So here's what's going on. Coinbase is reluctant to support the Flares Spark airdrop despite holding a massive amount of XRP. So what's happening here? Coinbase Lending exchange in the U.S. can't catch a break. <laughs> That's the truth. It riled up the XRP army after refusing to participate in the upcoming airdrop of Flare Network's Spark token. So they didn't come out and just say, hey, we're not going to do it. Tough luck. 
really what it is is Flair going, hey, this the, we've reached out. They haven't reached out to us. It's coming up on December, so they're not going to do it. It's just too late. And this is actually coming from the actual tweet from Flair Network. And they state, uh, Coinbase is barely engaged with Flair. They hold about $3 billion of your XRP. Yeah, $3 billion. Did I say $3 million? $3 billion, excuse me. It's likely too late for them to do the work to support the Spark distribution at this point. And then uh, Santiago says, hey, uh, because they've got that all locked up, they're not going to do anything, are you going to um, redistribute those unused Spark tokens to the remainder in the same way as exclusion? Meaning, since that is all locked up, which Spark should go to those holders, and it's supposed to be one-to-one -one for all XRP holders, what are you going to do? And uh, he asked, can you just give us the rest? Because those people aren't, you know, really including uh, themselves in the community. Because if they did, they would know about this. And Flair said, you know what? We're not going to consider it. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be what actually happens. So what they're saying is that, yes, they're going to redistribute the 3 billion Spark tokens that were supposed to go to the people who hold XRP in Coinbase and going to redistribute to everybody who has it in the correct wallets. What are the correct wallets and exchanges? Well, let me show you. This is from Stetis. If you don't know Stetis, he's like huge in the XRP community and he does a lot of these, these uh, great little uh, graphics. So here's the 20 exchanges that we know about so far. You got Uphold, Bit, I always say BitThumb, but somebody said BitHum, whatever. BitTrue, ZB, Binance, eToro, Bitstamp, Index, Crypto.com, Bitso, Tokens, Coinfield, BitPay, UpBit, GoPax, ProBit, CoinSpot, huh? KuCoin, BKEX, WazirX, I think that's the one from India, BitCub, and Corbit. Here's the 10 wallets. Zoom, Ledger, Guardia, Kobo, Exodus, and then for support, MetaMask, GateHub, SafePal, and Descent. So those are the ones that he has on there. I think this is old. I'm going to tell you why. Because this was a video that was just put out by Celsius, and this is uh, the Celsius chief technical officer. His name is Nuke. I think his name is Nuke. Man, what a great name, Nuke. So Nuke coming here and says, hey, uh, yeah, we will definitely be supporting this airdrop. And he just lays it out. It's like two minutes, a link in the description. You can watch it yourself. But he just says, you don't have to do anything. There's nothing to do. Just make sure you don't screw up and uh, move your XRP around. Just leave it in there and everything will be okay. He also addresses uh, about the redistribution by Spark. He says, if you're going to get one more than one, we're going to handle that. So don't worry about it. Just leave it in there. Don't do anything. And uh, that's it. He says it's going to happen on December 12th, I think, I believe is the date. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure. And he gives, gives a great advice. He says, don't transfer on December 12th because it happens, you know, at 12.01 a.m. Do it a day or two days before. I mean, really, honestly, you should have all your XRP where you want it to be right now. And uh, that's all you got to do. So just do it like that. And then I also heard rumblings that Voyager was going to do it, but I couldn't get any confirmation. And our last interview with uh, the CEO, Steve Ehrlich, this is on October 19th. He said, hey, man, we're really trying hard. We're really, you know, getting things done. And I was like, all right. And I, I like Steve. I believe Steve. And he actually said that they're working on uh, allowing more uh, cryptocurrency tokens and coins to be taken off the platform. And they actually did uh, come true with that because they just allowed uh, Cardano to be taken off the network, which is huge. I really appreciate that. So he said he's working on it, and then I didn't see anything on the website. It's a uh, pretty inclusive search, and I couldn't find anything. So I just reached out to him on Twitter. I sent him a direct message. I go, "Hey man, I know you're just uh, you're waiting for your jets to get pummeled by the. I, it says spam, but I try to say spanked, <laughs> spanked by the Bengals today. But I'm doing a video on all things XRP Spark airdrop. I saw some of you guys are going to support it." Was that already announced because I can't find anything? He said, yeah, we said on Twitter, but it's not in a formal release. But yes, we are. <laughs> Go Giants. I said, yeah, well, good luck with that. So you heard it right here. This is Steve Ehrlich. He's the CEO of uh, Voyager. He's saying, yes, we're going to support it. So just leave your XRP in that wallet just like you would with Celsius because they're going to support it. And, and then uh, it's going to be the same type of thing. If you get more than one, that's fine. They'll give you more than one. Uh, so that's the big thing. And this is uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But on the flip side, let's talk about who's not going to support it. Coinbase isn't going to support it. Also, Kraken just came out and said, look, we don't have any plan to support this airdrop of fork. You could consider withdrawing your coins, the wallet you control. Kraken is not obligated to credit airdrops that occurred in the past or that will occur in the future. They're just like, we don't care. Take your stuff off here. We don't want your junk. That's pretty much what it says to me. I mean, I could be wrong. And let me know in the comment section. Everybody's got their own opinion about it. But to me, if a lot of people, 
you have the third largest cryptocurrency, I mean, out there. So why wouldn't you support an airdrop that does it? I know it's a lot of work, but guess what? You're not the only game in town. So just saying. So Kraken's Kraken. I mean, they got their own things going on with their special depository unit trying to get a banking license or whatever else. So sure, whatever. I'm not going to give them a pass on that, but I'm just saying it is kind of odd. But this comes out to my next point, which is taking a look at Coinbase and what the hell's going on over there. Because, I mean, first of all, they didn't even engage with anybody. They didn't even put anything out. They're just like, mom's the word and uh, you guys figure it out. So sorry. We know you want it, but tough titty. So this is one of my first things. And I want to talk about how I think Coinbase is crumbling from internally. And I think, I don't know if they're going to be around. I mean, look, they're not going anywhere for a long time. And I'm going to tell you why. But... They are crumbling, I think, and I think they're doing the wrong things. And I think it's going to lead to a lot of uh, negative returns. So the first thing is, of course, this XRP support. I mean, if you got all these people, you should be supporting it. The second thing, and we've talked about this numerous times on this channel, and that is the Coinbase shutdowns. Now, I started, I have two playlists. One is the essentials, which is all the basic things everybody needs to know, like bull runs, avoiding scams and spams and you know how to uh, you know do dollar cost averaging all those things i mean the basic basic it's super important and then the only other playlist that i have is the coinbase shutdowns because i want to keep track of it and actually it's kind of after november 15th i just there's eight there's eight in there and there was a one that just came up uh just a couple days ago which same type of thing coinbase was down yet again and there's all these different outages and Alex Mascioli, he was on the show. He said it's it's inexcusable that you have this large of an entity with so many people's crypto and dollars that you go down at the most inopportune times when there's a huge fluctuation and people are trying to trade. That is really uh, unacceptable. And it's, it amazes me right now that people still go into Coinbase and they were actually the catalyst for why I created the exchange and wallet fees uh, because their fees are like astronomically crazy. And I just talked about all the ones that I use. And I talk about Celsius and Voyager and Gemini Uphold, and Uniswap. I mean, everything else that you could use. I think when people come in, they don't realize it because they're just like, oh, well, I hear about Coinbase. My friend talked about Coinbase. I'm going to use Coinbase. It's why I created this. And it's why I created uh, Dan Teaches Crypto, so I could teach everybody about the basics and the fundamentals. And I just added a new video in about all the people that are into PayPal and they're buying Bitcoin. Why, of course, you can do that. That's fine. Everybody's different. But why cryptocurrency digital assets, really the whole power is in decentralization. And PayPal is a centralized entity and what that means for you now and in the future. So that's just one of the basic and simple videos that I put on, on this website. So again, uh, a multi-billion dollar company shouldn't have this many outages. I mean, YouTube is a, is a huge company, billion dollar company as well. And when they go down, people are like, what the heck? I mean, it just happened like two weeks ago, but it's rare. Once, I mean, when's the last time besides two weeks ago that YouTube went down? It's like, it doesn't happen. So Coinbase should be the same way. So there's that, the XRP. Also, I had, I had heard rumblings on this is from the New York Times, and it talks about uh, discrimination, about how Coinbase treats some of their employees. I'm not going to get into that, but I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. And lastly, I want to talk about competition. When I got in 2017, it was Coinbase and Binance, and you know, there were some other small ones, but that was pretty much it. I mean, fast forward three years later, I mean, look at everything that you got. I mean, that are actually, you know, really well known. Like Kraken, Kraken was around. It wasn't as big as what it is right now. And then, you know, Gemini, that was also pretty small, but, it, you know, it came up. Binance, of course, was Binance. Uphold Abra. And then other things like Simple Swap and Uniswap, Cash App, and now PayPal. I mean, that's a lot of competition to really digest. And the reason why Coinbase is doing so well now is because they are America-based. And a lot of people in America, I mean, everybody in America can use Coinbase. I think even New York residents can use Coinbase. And it's like the only game in town. And that's why I think that Brian is so leery about regulation and everything being opened up. Because once everything gets opened up, once somebody like me, who is in Texas and I have a you know limited amount, can use other places like Let's just call a spade a spade, Binance Global. If I could use Binance Global, I'd be buying a lot more things over there. I Well, I don't use Coinbase anyhow, but I would definitely use it a lot more. And then just looking at like these decentralized exchanges, Uniswap, SimpleSwap, and then the ones that are coming out, like SellSwap. I mean, haven't you, isn't it amazing how much you've seen Coinbase change? In 2017, it was like four coins. 
excuse me, it was three coins. It was Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and that was it. And then when Bitcoin Cash came around, which was a very interesting thing, I might remind you, if you weren't around, it was amazing how uh, 24 hours before Bitcoin Cash was about to list on Coinbase, the, the actual price skyrocketed because somebody told somebody, and I'm not going to say it's manipulation, but it was manipulation. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just call it what it is. And that went crazy. And then all of a sudden, like every different coin, they were such the kingmakers back then. Every single coin that came out became like this huge, enormous thing. Now, I don't think it's it's gonna be like that again. I, I think Coinbase has its part, but I think the next big kingmaker is PayPal. The next coin that PayPal lists will go to the moon. So again, competition, I think it's big. And I think it's all these factors together are really gonna drive down Coinbase and their market share. It's like eBay. I mean, eBay used to be, remember eBay? How big eBay was? Well, what happened? Well. They got beat by a better model, drop shipping and Amazon. So, and here we are. But I will just say this, just take a look at the volume per exchange. Uh, if you take a look at the rankings, this is just two years ago. This is data.bitcoin, data.bitcoinity.org. And this is just for, for Bitcoin. To find all the different other rankings is kind of tough out there. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, but this is what we have as far as Bitcoin. So we'll just take a look at this. So this is two years ago. Just so you know, Brown is Coinbase. So they had 17.5%, pretty good. Bitfinex was at 38% and you know, Kraken 12, so pretty awesome, right? Then you take a look at six months, not really a big change, 28% in you know, a little fluctuation. 30 days, 23%, seven days, 30%, 26%, somewhere around there, 26 to 30%, three days, 27%, 25% pretty consistent so when i talk about all these things people are like well i thought you said it was crumbling i still believe it is crumbling i just think that as time goes on you take all these factors not listening to your customers internal conflicts constant outages constant outages and finally massive competition on top of the fact that when they really get legislation and it opens it up to everybody they're not going to go away but it'll be quite a chunk of loss as far as market share and that's my take all right, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. That is it for the XRP airdrop uh, spark. Hopefully it all goes well. Looks to be pretty good. I will be keeping most of mine on uh, Celsius and Voyager. Yeah, well, actually, no, I have my Nano as well. So uh, that's about it. And now let me tell you about some smart coffee. So this is smart coffee. I thought this is a pretty good gift, especially with Christmas coming about. Or if you're like me and you just want a little bit more clarity, focus, and memory, all that good stuff. Uh, just so you know, this is not a uh, sponsored product. I just bought it off my friend Cass. And uh, I thought, well, this might actually help some other people. So what this is all about is I like coffee. I also like chocolate. And uh, what's great about this is that it helps me with that mental clarity and getting through all the things. So I, I'd like to combine two things, things that'll help me uh, be a little bit more clear in my thoughts, give me a little bit more clarity and give me a little bit more energy. So I'll just combine both of them, fantastic. So what it has in it is the most basic things, right? Colombian dark roast, cocoa, extracts, and all that stuff. But it's the L-theanine, the PEA, and the AGPC, which is the most interesting parts about it. So the question I was asking is, what is in the product that I'm actually consuming? So the theanine, also known as L-theanine, it's an amino acid. It's usually in green tea, which is supposed to be great for you. But the studies show that theanine could help with dementia, high blood pressure, and unhealthy cholesterol levels. So I have uh, dementia that runs in my family, so I will definitely take that. Also for high blood pressure, I get a little ticked off sometimes, so I'm sure it goes sky high. I could help that. Next one is phenethylamine or PEA, and it's good for depression, attention, mood, and weight loss. I don't really need help with the weight loss, but you know, one of my brothers does, so <laughs> why not? You could use it. And again, if it, it's gonna help me, it's something that I already drink, so I might as well take that. Then the alpha GPC, alpha glycerol phosphorylcholine. It helps to increase acetylcholine, which is in the brain. This is important for memory and learning functions. So again, another one to help you with mental clarity and memorization. So it comes in three different flavors. You got your regular smart coffee, you got your nitro, which the only difference in nitro is that it has uh, nitric oxide, which is great for relaxing smooth muscles. So like our blood vessels, that's what is comprised of our blood vessels, helps to relax them. So if you have high blood pressure, this can actually help you as well. And also, if you don't like uh, coffee, you got chocolate. It comes in chocolate. I like chocolate. And then the last or the fourth one is if you don't like chocolate or coffee, it also comes in pink lemonade. So either way you want to. The only problem is, is that their website sucks. 
So if you want to order the uh, smart coffee for yourself or anybody in your family or loved ones, especially for Christmas coming up, then there's going to be a link in the description. It looks just like this. And uh, I separated them into four. Uh, this, the regular smart coffee, the smart coffee with nitro, the hot chocolate lemonade, and it goes to those four. And the reason I did that is because the website's very jumbled where I get it at. So I just give you the four direct links. Again, this isn't a sponsored promotion. My friend Cass recommended it to me because she knows I like coffee. And uh, I take it, really like it, and uh, I thought it might help you out. So that's it for today. So if you like these types of videos, uh, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do their magic on that one. And uh, that is it for Sunday. So uh, stay safe out there, go watch your football and have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.